Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Note Night in America. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm Scott Carson, CEO of WeClosedNotes.com, and we are rocking and rolling along this evening, uh, getting jacked up. We're going to punch some people in the face tonight. I don't know about you, but anytime I hear that message or the song by Foreigner, I want to run literally up a flight of stairs, punch a punching bag, or go do some crunches or push-ups. It gets me jacked up in here. And uh, that doesn't, as many of you would probably guess, it doesn't take too much to get me excited. But tonight's topic, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. And before we dive into tonight's topic, uh, it is called the Marketing Octagon. You're going to love what we talk about tonight because I'm going through a lot of things a little step by step tonight. It's been a while since we talked about marketing in, uh, in kind of a bigger, broader fashion. And this is a subject that I love because it helps make us exactly who we are. Uh, and it helps, it is helping so many real estate entrepreneurs, real estate investors, note investors take their business to hold 10x levels by doing simple things on a regular basis. So I'm looking forward to diving in tonight. So, first and foremost, if you're joining us for the first time on Note Night in America or you're watching this on Facebook Live, first of all, thank you for taking time on your schedule. We'll be out of here roughly about an hour. We host these just about every Monday night with some great content or great speakers or vendors to really help you accelerate your note business and real estate investments to, to help take it to a different level. Okay. Uh, we have real estate investors on here. We have note investors. We have people looking to get in notes, looking to lend money on notes. Wonder who the hell this crazy guy is on Facebook or on the webinar. Um, yes, these calls are recorded. I did hit the record button, I believe. Yes, I did. Uh, and you can catch the replays of these by going really easy to weclosenotes.tv. Our replays are always available at weclosenotes.tv with most of our videos online there for you to be able to tap into watch. If you've got to step out early or you miss something, want to go back and catch it, you'll be able to catch it there as well. And then also, we're starting to do something new in 2018. We're going to be taking our Note Night in America episodes and uploading them as special bonus episodes to the podcast. So that's one of the nice things that we'll be doing as well. We did upload, uh, last week's is about to be uploaded onto iTunes and Stitcher and that stuff as a bonus episode. So we'll be doing that as well here. So if you're listening to this on iTunes uh, or Stitcher or Apple Music or Google Play Music, whatever they are, please do me a, f a favor. If you're listening on those episodes, drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com and I will send you something very special. If you're listening on iTunes, like I said, not on YouTube or Vimeo, if you're listening there, please drop me an email and we'll be glad to hear that because we're, uh, we're probably doing that for a while there, wanting to see just kind of track, you know, where people are watching these things. But literally, once again, thank you all for listening. If you're listening to the podcast or listening to the podcast, or download this, thank you for listening. We are now over 53,000, almost to 54,000 downloads uh, in, the, in the first five months. So we're really excited about that. That is helping us. And you're going to see me say this over and over again. Uh, our big goal for the next five years is to help 10,000 note investors, help to educate and create 10,000 note investors. And so one of the big things I'm going to ask you guys, if you guys have other note investors, have other people that are interested in notes, please feel free to work, re refer them to the website, weclosenotes.com. Refer them to the Note Night in America podcast. Refer them in an email to me. We'll be glad to get them registered because we believe we can help and change note investing for some good stuff out there, really kind of revolutionize what's going on. We, I'm really excited. We've got kind of a, a cool thing that's kicking off. It kicked off a little bit last night, but really officially kicking off today and really going into gusto tomorrow through Friday. So stay tuned for some updates on that kind of super secret thing. I know we've got a few people on here that are part of that. Um, kind of a closed thing that I didn't allow everybody to be on, but uh, we're excited about that to really drive a lot of product and, and, and bring some deals to the table for everybody. But anyway, that's our goal. 10,000 investors in the next five years. And we're on our way to doing that. So um, just wrapped up a great weekend here in Austin, though. We had a couple of investors come in and spend three days with us here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was here for our fast track training. Uh, our subsequent uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one trainings are filling up pretty fast in the first quarter. Uh, we've only got two spots left for the February 23rd, 24th, and 25th ones. I mean, of course, uh, we've got three spots left in the March 16th, 17th, and 18th. And we've spent a lot of time going through your needs as a note investor here through these fast track trainings. They're, they're basically our one-on-one -on -one thing. And then, of course, 
once you've gone through a fast track, you're part of the Note Mastermind. So RSVP now. You can um, enjoy the three days of coaching. It's for good, good for you plus a partner or spouse. And uh, we'll help you put your note business in overdrive. You can just drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com. But we're excited for those that are already part of our note mastermind. If you did not know this, our next mastermind meeting is April 13th, 14th, 15th. Yes, you'll need to have your taxes done by then. But it's in uh, beautiful Cape Coral, Florida. It's going to be at the Westin Cape Coral Resort. Well, you're just jacked up because we love this place. It's a relaxed, beautiful uh, resort for us to hang out and really network, really grow our businesses. Uh, you want to contact Stephanie Goodman at 512-507-5663 to see about reserving your spot. Uh, we do have a room block that will fill up fast, so reserve now. I know we're literally still 60 days, 70, 80 days out from it, but there's no time like the present to start prepping for your 2018. So any questions about that before we dive into me punching you all in the face tonight or you punching me in the face tonight because i know some people want to punch me in the face and that's fine i'll take it hit me hard because i get all jacked up all right i get all jacked up any questions before we start exchanging blows exchanging punches <laughs> uh. <laughs> no questions no comments no concerns that's good all right we're rolling forward so today is what is the day? Today is January 22nd, right, everybody? Uh, you got to realize we're about 8% of the way done with the year already. And you have to also realize if you're not seeing the results, you're not having the success that you want to, it's either one, you're not evolving with the times, you're still operating like it's last year or two years ago, or you're just flat out lazy and not doing the things that you need to do. Uh, and by those that are still doing business the old way, that doesn't mean you're lazy. I'm not saying that. Those that are lazy that know the things that they need to be doing and they just flat out don't. They try to do the bare minimum. And then they bitch about not having any success or not having any investors or not having any deal flow because they're still trying to do business as normal like it was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. I had a phone call this afternoon with the guys like, oh, I tried to do the note business 10 years ago. Has it changed some since then? And I'm like, really, dude? You have to ask that. You, you Yes, it's changed. It's different. There's things you have to do today that you didn't have to do a year ago, that you didn't have to do two years ago or five years ago, okay? And if you don't, if you're not doing the things that you want to do, you're not doing the things that you need to do, you're getting punched in the face. You are the punching dummy for some of the people. And Matt, you asked a really good question. Uh, when is the marketing book release date that you're working on? This is literally one of the big things that we're working on. This Literally this webinar is kind of precursor to the book that we're working through to get released and written for you guys tonight, all right? So this is kind of the launch of it, and I think it's, like I said before, I haven't done a marketing webinar in some in, in some time, and we're rechanging up because I think what we did before was great. It was like, oh, you could do this, but honestly, right now, I'm gonna get in your face, okay? And I'm gonna punch you in the face tonight with content. I'm gonna give you the things that you need to succeed. I'm not gonna sit here and just blow smoke, oh, you should, eh, you feel good to do this, no, these are the things that you should do. And those that are doing them are seeing the success they want to do. Or they get up to where they want to be and they're fine. Everything runs on autopilot point. Or they use the things we're going to teach tonight to really launch into where they want to be. And then they get enough investors. They get enough deals going. They can do whatever they want. But I'm going to be talking to those that are brand new or those people that have been around for a while and aren't seeing the type of success that they have. Or they're more worried about the playoff games than their business. They're more worried about watching Grey's Anatomy or The Bachelor versus doing something, or they bitch about not having any money, okay? Or they post in groups bare minimum information, hoping that somebody will save them when they should just do a lot more, okay? So, hang on here. You better believe this is live, MG. This is totally live. It's going out on Facebook Live. It is live. You can ask me questions, anything there, my friend. It's not recorded webinar. We don't do recorded webinars. When I do a live webinar on Monday night, it's live and in your face, my friend. All right. <laughs> uh, my business is the Super Bowl for me. There you go. I like that, uh, Michelle. That's the way I look at things. But anyway, let's go into it. So I'm going to ask all of you this really dumb question, but I expect honest answers. How long will you be an investor? And I want you to think of that for a second. How long will you be an investor? Before you answer this, if you haven't grabbed yourself a piece of paper, or pencil, 
grab something now because trust me, you're going to want to take some notes to tonight's thing. There's going to be some aha moments. There's going to be some note nuggets delivered in the next 45 minutes for you all. Okay? All right? So Raj says, the rest of my life, or the lifelong. Or Michael says, Michelle says, the rest of my life. Yeah, that's great. But a lot of people are acting like, well, I'm only going to be around one year. Eh, five years. Uh, Ten years. Twenty years. And like some of you said, the rest of my life, right? Thirty years, right? That's what I expect. Until I die, Phyllis says. That's, I'm glad you said that, but many of you, let me ask you a dumb question. Are many of you wearing different clothes than what you did five years ago or 30 years ago or 20 years ago? You're not wearing the same shoes or the socks or the underwear. I hope you're not wearing the same underwear from 10 years ago. That would be kind of disturbing, but you're wearing different clothes. You've had to evolve. You had to go out, buy new clothes. You had to go put on new shoes. You have different responsibilities than you did a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Can we agree to that, everybody? That's a hell yes, okay? All right. Unfortunately, most of you are still doing things like you did 10 years ago or what you learned at some workshop or some webinar when you first started and you have not evolved, okay? So the question is, if you started doing something today, would you have the dedication 30 years from now to do something different? And I brought up this image. This is one of the most powerful stories I've ever heard about. It's about this guy in India, all right, who started planting trees on a sandbar on his country in 1979. And as of now, there's a forest growing there. There is a jungle, a desolate sandbar. He grew in a forest over 30 years of planting trees every day, every week, doing something every day. No, he did not see instant gratification from things. No, he did not see a rhino grow into his forest, things like that. But now you look back down, now his desolate sandbar that was void of life is now a forest because he did little things on a daily basis. Unfortunately, specifically so much more in the States here, we are spoiled brats that have no patience. We will not invest in anything long-term a lot of times because, well, we're not going to have this way, so I'll do something else. I'd rather have that cup of coffee from Starbucks. Oh, I'll get to it later. I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch a replay on ESPN. And I am guilty of ESPN. I like sports, but I've not watched ESPN in the last two weeks, actually. Um, I'm not preaching to the choir. I fail on things all the time. But one of the things you have to keep in mind is where do you want to be in five years, 10 years, 20 years from now? Do you still want to be in that sandbar bitching about not having any life or any deals or any investors or no cash flow? Or do you want to start doing the things on a daily basis now to help you get to that point where you do have this amazing, lush, green business and i know the answer is yes you all want to do things yes but the question i ask you guys you aren't doing the things on a daily basis now to go that route i see this every day i see it from all of you all right many people aren't doing the things they knew they need to do on a daily basis to have that type of success they're just not or they're lazy and, and unfortunately we live in a lazy society okay so the question i have for you is if you really are interested in changing things do you have what it takes to be? Do you have what it be it takes to be to be a, a champion at some point? If you knew that you could work for 10 years now and do stuff on a daily basis and be this amazing investor, this amazing sought after individual, this amazing expert in your field, would you do it? If you knew that you could do 50, get up every morning, wake up, do 25 push-ups and be healthy and never have a heart attack later on, put some money in the bank and have a billion dollars later on, would you do it? And yes, we all say we would do it, but not, we don't always do that, okay? We all fall down on the spot doing different things. We are all getting our asses beat by life. We're all getting knocked in the face and knocked down out before we even get in the ring. And what is that ring? That ring, as I call it, is the octagon of life. Okay, why the octagon? Well, I like to look at case studies of things. I like to see where things are going. And one of the things when I start thinking about marketing, uh, I think one of the things I don't watch a lot of, but I think is an absolute brilliant thing is the mixed martial arts. Okay, and I think it's marketing at its finest. Okay, absolutely think it's marketing at its finest. Now you don't have to be an MMA fan. You don't have to be that, but you have to agree that what these, this company does, what they have done with mixed martial arts and the UFC over the last 20, 30 years has been remarkable. 
Okay, mixed martial arts really kind of big began in officially in 1980. I mean, they had mixed martial arts overseas, but I'm talking for here in the United States. Really kind of began in 1980, and I can. They had different things. That's but you know, some of you may. I remember in college watching the Ultimate Fighting Championships was kind of a precursor, a bloody cursor to that. And then it's grown. The UFC Ultimate Fighting Championships began in November 12th, uh, 1983. Or was it 1993? I may have the date off there wrong. But anyway, think back. Evander Holyfield was a heavyweight champion in 1983, right? 1993. Thank you, Donovan. I knew. Hang on, let me fix this because this is important. I'm going to end up using this at some point again. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Thank you very much, Donovan. I looked at that as like, huh, what happens when you end up trying to do two presentations at one time? All right. Andrew Holyfield was a heavyweight champion of boxing in 1993, and the UFC was this little fledgling, like, flea. All right? They would be, like, fighting in gyms and other things like that. It wasn't serious of what it is today at all. They were going against boxing, which the Vander Holyfield, you know, the – Great big champion who's now got three fourths of an ear on one side. Michael, you know, Vander Holyfield versus Michael Tyson and that kind of stuff. I can remember watching Mike Tyson biting Vander Holyfield's ear on a pay per view thing in like 1996 or anything. But anyway, what I'm getting at is you think about that. We're talking 1993, which is officially 25 years ago, right? And if you think about who, if I could ask you who's the heavyweight boxing champ today, some of you might be able to say it. I had to look to find out who it was. I didn't know who it was. All right. Now you would know probably Floyd Mayweather. He's a boxer. Came a grown name. But as far as other boxers out there, it's not the same thing as far as popularity these days. You look at the fights and the things that they have. The UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, is literally kicking boxing's butt as far as popularity and draws and pay per view things. The UFC has done such a tremendous job to where it's at today from where it was back in 1993 in overcoming the biggest draw out there, okay? So much that the fans demanded that big fight between McGregor, Conor McGregor, and Evander Holyfield. I'm not Evander Holyfield, sorry, uh, Floyd Mayweather, right? Why is it? Why is it doing so well? Is it because there's a younger generation that really likes that balance? It's a possibility. It's possible they have more events that have a bigger draw, possibly. Is it be that they're better marketers? And I honestly think it is because of the better marketing aspect of things. If you look back to a few years ago, they started doing the whole re- uh, reality TV series to get people to a contract so they had to do it. And they started, you know, Dana White, the guy in charge of the UFC, is such a great marketer and promoter. He does this, he lives and breathes to the point where they got bought now. Uh, UFC is, uh, has a big, I mean, a billion dollar value to it compared to what it was back in 1993. But you look at that, who else does things like that. Not many people will do that. They start off slow, little, flea, and keep building every day, getting better every day, having ups and downs and things like that. We as real estate investors do. We all do that. We all start off brand new, getting our ass kicked, being a punching bag for other investors a lot of times till we figure things out and get moving on. So we're all fighting to accomplish things, right? We're all fighting to find more deals. We're all fighting to raise more capital. We're all fighting to grow your network of investors or buyers or sellers. We're all fighting to become a trusted source in our own circle, our own tribe, to do a variety of things. What? Close more deals. Make more money, ultimately, and do things. And a lot of us, we're kind of like the Rocky thing. we got to figure it out. We're out there punching raw meat, you know? with our bare hands, trying to get strong, trying to do something to separate ourselves to the point that we fight and claw and punch our way to the top until we're champions out there. And that champion belt is different for everybody. Can we agree to that, everybody? It's totally different than everybody else. Uh, Casey's right. The UFC has more marketing avenues due to their internet, due to the internet growth. They do. They have a lot more internet channels, but boxing has those same channels that I'm trying to get at. And boxing is doing shitty job of it. They're not doing and taking advantage of all the social media and the different marketing avenues that everybody has. They're just not doing it like we all should. The promoters are doing promotion, promoting the, the way they used to versus the way it's done today. And that's one of the big things that I see you guys out there doing. I see a lot of people sitting around not doing the things they need to do, acting like it's business as normal from years ago when it's not. It's different. If you're tired of your job, you're tired of doing crappy things or being on the road or working for somebody else, you ultimately 
hold your destiny in your hands. And you can choose, what are you doing with your downtime? Are you just sitting and bitching about your situation? Or are you going to do the things online to market yourself, to market deals, to grow your network? Or are you too busy drinking beer at night? Okay. So let's dive into this. So how do you win your championship belt? How's that bell going to ring for you to grow your belt? And honestly, it's something that we are calling the marketing octagon. Okay. The marketing octagon. It's eight-sided thing, and they all build upon itself. The octagon, or if you remember, in Roman times, the arch was one of the strongest engineering concepts of this place, one of the strongest things out there because it all kind of felt, felt together. And I believe that's how your marketing is supposed to work. I know we've talked about using something called the content spider where you have one thing and these little side things off that you can do. No, I don't believe that. I think a spider is too weak. I think you need to have an octagon where it's all tied in together. If you get in the habit that you have to do it all together, it all works together with things, the better you're off going to be. And I use my trainer as an example. My Thomas, uh, my trainer, Thomas Dean, any old Mickey, if you think about that, from Rocky, they would give things to you, break you down to the basics and rebuild you back up again. So you're doing the, you know, the footwork and the, the cardio and then the physical lifting and the running and the diet and the sleep. All that fits together. And that's why I'm a big believer in the marketing message that you should be delivering today. It's a marketing octagon because it all comes together. Yes, it may not be the exact same eight things for everybody, but you have to look at that spec. You know, yes, I know some of you don't want to do eight things, but you need to be doing eight things. And a lot of you are like, well, I don't see how that works. I don't see the impact of it immediately. Yeah, you won't see the impact to it because if you don't do it, you're not going to see anything. But if you do these things over and over and over and over again, it will ultimately achieve success for you and you will be much further off. So let's talk about that. We all have the exact same tools that these big firms have. Okay. The exact same tools. You have the same why. Unfortunately, some of their whys are maybe more impactful to them to be better to their stockholders than you having the why of your family, your kids, your friends, your whatever it is. You're the, the why you owe yourself to get your ass of a bad position. To pull yourself out of a sling to be better off. Uh, Linda says, I know them all but the blue W. What is what is that one? That's WordPress. Okay. I'll go through here in a minute. Okay. You are smarter than most people ever, whether you believe. If you're here, guys, you're, you're probably smarter than most people. The fact that you're an inter- entrepreneur working for your own business, you're ultimately smarter than most people that have a job. Why is that? Because a job shows up for their eight hours, they clock in, they clock out. They don't give a shit. When I go to events and I see these hedge fund guys talking about the market and stuff like that, they're not, they don't have the same thing on the line that you and I do as investors. We have our money. We have our livelihood on the line where they're working for somebody. And I like to ask those guys, how many of these deals have you bought yourself? Well, I, I don't. Well, that tells me something about yourself. You're not the same pace. That's why I'm saying. You are smarter than most people, everybody. And the, the question is, why are you not using the free tools that are available to you all? Choosing not to use these tools or them is choosing failure. Because everything I have on here is basically free for you guys. But if you're not using this on a regular basis, you're really choosing failure. And I don't care. You can't use the excuse, well, I don't know how to use it. Well, you don't know how to use it because you've not gone out and played around with it for a little bit. Okay? And you're like, well, I'm more of a one-on-one person. Well, that's the old way of doing business. If you want to do that, great. But I'm going to blow by you. And anybody else using the tools out there is going to punch you in the face because you're still doing business as old, okay? The one-to-many facet is today's business model to grow your network, to close more deals, raise more capital. It's all got to be about that in mind. You have to worry about getting the word out to the masses, not just the one-on-one. You need to quit worrying about, oh, there's that one person I say something bad. Screw them. Forget about it, okay? And it's all about creating conversations. The one-to-the-many is all about that turnaround and creating individual conversations once you've gotten the word out. Does it make sense, everybody? So if you got any questions, now's a good time to ask on some stuff because we'll go into a lot of stuff. Okay. Marissa, thank you for responding. Great. So let's, let's go through an octagon. Let's go through it, and I'll give you kind of the step-by-steps, the high points of what you need to focus on. And trust me, if you see me do the, this is different than what we've done before. Okay? So don't hang up while Scott's talking about the same old thing. No, I'm not. Because if you have not posted something in the last 12 hours, the last day, or specifically over the last weekend, this is about you, everybody. 
If you're calling yourself a real estate investor but aren't posting things on a regular basis or growing your business on a regular basis, this is all about you. So you better strap in, tell your friends, your drinking buddies, or turn the TV off, turn your email off, and pay attention right now because it's about to get real up in here. Okay? We'll cover more specific questions in a minute here, right, Marissa Gittry? Use MailChimp and my emails get sent to the promotion folders on Google or Spam, causing my opener to be very low. We'll cover some of this stuff later on. So just hang on as we go through this, okay? And yes, if you could do me a favor, if you're watching this on Facebook, please share this because this message is good for any type of real estate, any type of entrepreneurship out there. Please share it. I would love it. See if we can't get a 1,000 views on this video tonight across the board. I'm not selling anything. This is not to pitch you on anything. This is literally is to help you all make things happen. So if you could share it, I want to thank Stephanie, I want to thank Laura for sharing this. You guys have shared some stuff. It all starts with a deal. All right. So the biggest thing when you get a real estate deal or a note deal or whatever it is, is get a freaking decent photo. Okay. And that could be either your realtor taking a photo, something off a previous MLS listing, or you using a Google Street Maps view. Okay. All right. I don't care if you're cash strapped, MG, the, the deals come first because good deals will find you money. So this will be the idea that you have zero money to fund this deal, okay? Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, other people for sharing. Appreciate it, okay? So if you I don't have the money, then you need to watch this more than anything else, okay? And we'll talk about how often you post and things like that as we get through this. So pay attention here. Um, can you just wait with your questions till the very end, Bob? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. All right. So you start with a deal. Start with a photo. I got a photo right here. Here's a property we're working through Inkster, Michigan, 3517 Moore Street. This is a vacant property where the borrower walked away for. It's basically now an REO. Okay. So what's the first thing you should do to market this? Well, you've got a photo and we have added two little things by going to canva.com and just put, simply put an REO property in Inkster. If you don't have Canva, you could do this in paint. I think every computer has paint, okay? Does it, we pull, basically just did a screenshot there, Google, Google Maps photo. Now I have a better photo of this, but for this, this situation here, I want to do something very easy. So it's a good photo, great, decent property, awesome, okay? Now, thing you want to do, the first thing you want to do since you've got this is post it to Instagram. That's number one in our marketing octagon, okay? And you want to have it featured with like hot buttons. Maybe hot, hot button doesn't mean where do you put the button? That means like hot comments, like 30% fair market value property or like a 12, you know, 18% ROI in a rental. Okay. You want to use a short description and you want to use hashtags. Now, why do you want to use hashtags? Well, hashtags specifically using real estate, REO, invest, cash flow, SDIR. I like to use hashtag we close notes as well. Is that allows other people on Instagram we're looking for real estate, can type in hashtag real estate as a search and find anybody with something posted on this. So let me give you an example. So let me pull up, let me pull up Instagram here. All right. And why it's valuable. Yeah, I know I need to do a new share. Hang on here. All right. So here's Instagram. This is my page in finance. Okay. So this is from George Anton. So now, this is not bad, but you see down below here, finance, financial help, financial education, millionaire, mindset, social media, SMM. So George is hoping and his marketing staff that anybody who's looking legacy hashtag family who looks for searches is going to find his post and do that. So let's just do hashtag, oops, hashtag real estate. There's 11,971,000 posts. Say hashtag real estate. That's a lot of posts. Okay. Now you can come across the top posts, the most like, but I like to go down here in the most recent ones. So, like this one right here. We can warn the sold sisters can help you with a new construction. Great. But I like to get in the conversations with people. So, I may, mean, I'll like that one. Okay. I'll be the, come on, be the first to like that. Great. But I'll also follow up if I see something that makes sense. Okay. Renovation, demolition, cross country, other than a Super Bowl, it's doing and going to get another switch. So Middlesex County, Connecticut. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and follow them because I occasionally will come across deals up in Connecticut. Okay. The whole idea is just to get the conversation started or make the conversation, okay? Look at this. Sold, equity. 
This is an ugly piece of property. This is a great one here. Uh, equity deal, real estate, real estate agent, Rancher Drive deal was finally confirmed. This deal fell apart two times with the patients, the person deal. I can put a picture of that deal in here and do the same hashtags. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? Just get it sharing after, get it out and use the hashtags for other people that are looking for the same conversations to come across your post. Okay? Come across your post. Let me give you, let me, uh, let me pull up my profile here because we posted some photos and some of the things. So I got the dog, Step in the Octagon, National Social Media Day. I'm going to find a picture of a property in here because we post so much stuff. And we got all this cruise photo stuff and having fun. Okay, here's one. I, I posted, it was kind of funny. Talking about commercial, we closed this office out of our water closet. Just a funny photo I took. Well, it had literally, what, 20 likes on it? Great. And I click on the people that liked me, Hulk could, most of these people, some of these people are on here tonight. Tanya, oh, I don't follow Tanya, I thought I did. Find fun, flip, oh, I'll join them. I'll start following them, okay? The idea is to grow your network. Now I've grown my network from that to make things happen, okay? But I post on there. It's the first part of posting, just to get the word out to what people are doing, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? That's the easiest thing you do. First thing you do, taking your photo, and post it into Instagram, okay? But use some of the things in there that are attractive to the people. No, I got this three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot house, but use a hashtag, hashtag cash flow, hashtag rental, hashtag Michigan, okay, rentals. And you can also wanna post it a couple times throughout the day. I don't believe posting first thing in the morning is the best thing to do. I'm a bigger believer of posting at noon or three o'clock or seven o'clock or even nine o'clock at night when people are sitting in bed, looking at their phones, or watching TV, getting ready to go to bed. Those, the later in the day actually works better on Instagram. Like I said, use this several times. If you have different photos of the property, okay? And then the easiest number two thing in the octagon is to post it to Google Plus with the exact same thing. The photo, the exact same description about the deal, and the exact same hashtags. And I know many people are like, why Google Plus is worthless. But yes, it's not the same type of interaction that you have on Facebook. Or Instagram. Totally agree with that. But who owns Google Plus? Who owns Google Plus? Right? Not a hard thing. Google. Yes, that's correct, Marissa. Give me a Y. Give me an E. Give me an F. Yeah. Yes, they own it. So that's why you post it there so that people will see it because Google will keep it going. Um, I'll give you a great example. A couple of years ago, Lori Davidson, who's one of our mastermind members, was here in Austin. She'd hired somebody a year before that to write an article on a couple of deals in Atlanta. And we did a search for Atlanta real estate deals. And her article from a year ago that they posted to Google Plus popped up was still on the first page. Okay? Just go ahead and post it there. Some people argue with you, but it's owned by Google. And Google loves native com content to its stuff, so it ranks you in the thing there. So do that. If you're going to post to Google Plus, make sure and put your website in there as well. Okay? Um, but the, basically, the reason you're posting there is just simply for SEO optimization. That's I guarantee that's why you're there for. You, will you see something immediately? No, but you want, you post enough deals on Google+, Plus, it'll start ranking at the top of the first pages, and you got a great photo. Google loves photos, okay? Loves, loves, loves photos. So any questions about these one and two in your, present, in your basically your octagon? All right, your marketing octagon. Any questions about that before we dive on? Okay, and there's not anything that you can use to automate everything we're going to talk about. Now, you could use Hootsuite or Buffer to set that up to automate it for you if you want to, or not really automate it, but automate your post use throughout the day. You can do that. Nicole loves Buffer here in the office, so she's constantly adding things to it. She's adding things to it today on different deals. Okay. I would post to your, your personal page, Jeffrey. I mean, or go ahead and post it to both. Just post it to both. If you got a Google Plus business page, post it to both, okay? Or you could have a VA do it. Yes, exactly, okay? All right, let's move on. Now, really, where do you want to come out across to really punch people in the face is this next aspect. Of course, you got an image, great little image. Use Canva. will help you maximize your the size and add some features to it, make it look nice. Okay. I would totally create a deal video, a deal video on Facebook Live. Totally. Pull your smartphone out. Go to your Facebook page. Hit live. 
All right. Last time I did a short little deal video on Facebook Live in the workshop in December, I had 30 people reach out to me, even though it was a fake deal. We want to fund that deal. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, it's a fake deal. Oh, well, put me down for the next deal you have. Okay. Easy to do. You want to keep this short, make it two to five minutes. Okay. And the way you come across them effectively is to outline what you're going to say. Hey, here's the property. Here's where it's at. Here's a little bit of the story. Here's the rent rates. Just go through the points and keep it short and sweet. You don't want to go, uh, 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 I was on a webinar. I was on the Quest IRA uh, thing on Saturday for 30 minutes. And, the, and one of the presenters I, I logged in and listened to said, uh, 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 every second between a comment. I just, man, Jesus, it's horrible. Okay. Not a smart thing. I know, know we all do it. But that's, you don't want to be, uh, uh, if you are, don't worry about first time you're going to suck. So just embrace it. But do a short little video. Doesn't have to be long. Just you, your face. Hey, I got this great deal. Or you do it yourself behind the dry erase board, the you know, dry erase board behind you. Use your phone to film it, okay? You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need this fancy $1,000 <sighs> camera. Just use your freaking smartphone or your Android. Very easy to do. Let's not make having to learn a new piece of equipment a barrier to enter in this because everybody should be doing this. Okay. Now, once you've filmed it on your Facebook page, go out and share it, share it to other real estate groups, share it to other note groups, share it to uh, real estate one-on-one or the 713 Houston real estate page or to the Andrew McDaniels note buyers page, whatever, share it to other Facebook groups. You can do that. Easy to do. Okay. Um, when you go into your videos on Facebook, your videos, it'll ask you to pick the thumbnail that you want to use, the image, or it'll allow you to upload one. So use the image, the photo you created for Instagram and Google Plus as your thumbnail for that, okay? Now, what you can do with that, if it's a Facebook Live, is you can go in and do a, a create a custom uh, ad to custom audiences on Facebook. Do it for 10 bucks a day for seven days. Spend 70 bucks. Or five bucks a day for you know thirty five bucks, whatever. Create a custom ad to either your custom audiences if you've uploaded, or create a custom audience. If you need to create a custom audience, here's what I would do: make sure they're thirty five to sixty five, college educated, homeowners who have an interest in real estate or notes. Um, I would maybe create two custom audiences: one located in the in your deals area, maybe if, like if it's in uh, Inkster, Michigan, I would do it around Detroit or Michigan. Okay. Or do it somewhere around your local area here, Austin or Texas, okay? You want to try to see if you can uh, identify people that are making 75K or more a year, okay? That's going to be basically your avatar of what you want to do. That's your, your basic information on your specific target and label it. Oh, uh, it's my Michigan area avatar. Or that's my Ohio. Or that's my Austin. And then just promote to those people, okay? Easy to do. But one thing you want to make sure you do, the reason why you want to use the, uh, the Instagram thing is you want to have less than 25% text in your article. So you want to make the, the thumbnail and your image all about the property, okay? You save the descriptions for the, you know, description of the deal in the, in the content below. Don't put it in the photo. It'll, they'll won't let you deliver it or they'll kill your ad, okay? Questions about that before we move on to the next thing? Literally, a Facebook Live video, and then how do you download? Literally, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. So, I go to my Facebook page. New share. I know, I do new share. Hang on here. Right. And I do a Facebook Live. I just go over here to my page at home. Once again, thank you to everybody that shared. If you can share, if you haven't not shared, go ahead, okay? Now where it says more, you see videos in the next one. So click on the videos. And then videos of you, but I want your videos. So you click on your videos and you see here's all the Facebook lives we're doing for a podcast. Okay. And so let me just click on this one. I'll click on the edit thing. And this is our webinar from Bob Malecki. Okay. Hit edit this video. And I can pick the thumbnail. Some will have three thumbnails, some will have longer, depends on the situation. Okay. Or is this video taken? Well, awesome Texas year. Put a little information about your deal video in here. Okay. Um, you can choose a file if you want captions. You don't really need that. All right. But the beautiful thing on here is in this video, you can tag people, Bob Malecki. So I should probably do this. Bob Malecki. Okay. Jack Carson. 
All right. And this video taken, you can tag the area. We close notes.com. All right. Really great little things to do. Make it public. Okay. Other real estate, whatever. And it's safe. Okay. Now what I can also do with this video is once I've got my Facebook live or my Facebook live video in there, I can download this video too. Okay. So I can go back to my video page. I don't need to edit this video. I just go back to where you saw all those videos at. Okay. Some more videos, your videos, hit edit, <sighs> download an SD or HD. So I click download, now it's downloading. Now I have a video, an MP4 video down here, downloading at the bottom of my page. That takes us to the next thing, okay? What's the next thing? Put it on the tube, all right? And by YouTube, I mean YouTube, okay? So like I just said, download your Facebook Live video, upload it to your YouTube channel, and YouTube is your number four thing in your octagon. Get half the octagon done with number four already, okay? Upload it to your YouTube channel, real easy to do. Upload it as a video. You can use your description and points that you covered in your Instagram account as your initial description. Now, one big thing about YouTube is in your descriptions, you want to make sure and put your website as the first, first little article, okay? Along with hashtags, it'll ask for descriptions and hashtags and keywords. You can put a variety of keywords to help drive traffic. So if somebody goes to YouTube and types in Scott Carson, they come across my video. So I use notes, Scott Carson, 80 Speed, Cash Flow, Rental, Donna Bauer, Residential, Foreclosure, Short Sales. I put all those as keywords or hashtags in my description, on, not my description, but when it asks for hashtags, I try to get as many in there as I possibly can. Why? So if somebody's looking and searching for somebody else saying fix and flip, they may see my video pop up on their thing. It's the same thing that you can do, okay? Well, Scott, what if I've, I sell somebody to sell this deal? Great, still post the damn deal. Use this deal as 24 hours, seven day a week advertising. Now, the great thing you can do as well is you wanna get the video transcribed, okay? So then you can go to rev.com. We do a new share here with you guys. You're going to love this. All right. So we got this down here as well, right? It's going to take forever to download. So what I do now is I just go over to rev. Rev.com. And if your video is, you know, five minutes long, great. It's going to cost you a dollar a minute to transcribe it. So literally. Transcription is a dollar a minute. If you want to have them do captions, they'll do caption subtitles as well for a dollar a minute. I don't really think you need that right now. I think just the captions is right there. So basically just click on here, upload the file. Very, very simple. Boom. Upload it. Place your order. And literally, if you got a five-minute video, upload file directly from it, and it's downloading. So you just click on it. Boom or paste a URL if you wanna to go to and just use the URL from YouTube, put that in there, they'll go out and do it. They'll do the transcription, shorter videos, get really quick turnaround time. So now what happens is you get a transcription back of your video that same day or the next day, all right? Go back into YouTube, all right? Go back into YouTube and upload your five minute description a transcription into YouTube in the description that will help drive SEO. That will help make your YouTube videos stand out from the rest. Because somebody can type in keywords or some simple little lingo you use in your literally in your video may drive people to your video. This is what has helped us with our podcast is that we throw the video up there, they get transcribed and they put the description up on our, our blog and it drives a lot of feedback, drives a lot of views off it and simple things that you can use. Okay, so as far as cost to this point, does it cost anything for an Instagram account? Does it cost for anything for Google Plus? Does it cost anything for a YouTube video or a YouTube post? The only thing we talk about now is $5 cost for your rev thing. Cup of coffee. If it's two minutes, guess what? $2. $2 make you holla, all right? Uh, now what you wanna do is go back, and I talked about before, upload your transcription to YouTube video description, and then you wanna go back over to Google Plus, and repost your YouTube video. Now use the link from YouTube to post that in Google Plus, but put your description, 
the transcription in the description part of things. It will boost traffic to that aspect on Google+. Plus. SEO optimization, we're talking copy paste, not difficult at all for you, okay? Very simple copy and pasting for the most part. They'll send you a Word doc with a transcription and we don't really spend time editing on it, just copy paste. Okay? You may wanna look at the numbers, make sure it's accurate. But honestly, very easy. We're talking a few clicks and paste here. You don't have to create anything. The only thing you're really creating is the high points in your Facebook Live video. Hey, I had this great deal in Inkster, Michigan. It's three bedroom, two bath, two story house was a note deal where the borrower walked away from it. So we took the property back. Rents for eight hundred dollars a month. It's worth about forty. We're willing to sell this to you at twenty five thousand dollars right now. Be a good ROI. Needs a little bit of work. Roughly about five grand to get it updated into rent ready in Michigan. Uh, all the appliances are there. Um, Look, if you want to do this, check out WeCloseNotes.com. Drop me an email, scott at WeCloseNotes.com. And we'll make sure to get you uh, in touch with our realtor or give it a lot box code so you can go out and take a look at it. All right? Something simple. All right? Nothing difficult. Just share the short description, two to five minutes. All of you can do that based on the spreadsheets you get. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be an, autumn, an awesome performer on video. Okay, that sounded really bad, but you get what I'm saying. You can literally just print the big picture up paste the wall and then film you just showing the video. Uh, George Crocker did that. He painted it out, printed out a picture of a property, actually crossed out the address and marker <laughs> and did a video. It worked well. I wish you would do more of them, George. Wish you'd get your butt back in gear to do some things better. Okay. All right. I'm not going to talk about where to find the deals. That's not where this webinar is about. You want to talk about finding the deals? That's another webinar we do. We're not going to go through everything in one evening, man. This is all about marketing octagon. All right. All right. Now you want to link up with others. Okay. Now what you want to do is take, go to your LinkedIn page, which is free. You just have the free version is fine and create a short update on your LinkedIn profile. It's number five for you. And what I mean by that? Well, let's share this with you. So go to LinkedIn, boom, home. Yep, I know I need to do screen share. Hang on here. All right. So here it is. I'm literally going to go right here. Boom. Hey, I get this great. I've got this great house in Inkster, Michigan that we took back. Whatever. And then I click on the image. Inkster. Thing. I would upload, throw my picture up on there, put it, or I could put the link to the video there. Get a video link on my computer. I could upload the video to it if I want to do the deal video there. Really easy to do, but I would like to. I think you do need to do two things with LinkedIn. You need to do a short, little short thing with an image, and then you need to go over here and then actually write an article. And write an article is not difficult. So all you're going to do is what? Copy paste. And when I say by write an article, boom, this is going to take you over here. Put the image here, put the headline, great ROI on Inkster Michigan property, okay? Something catchy, and then bam, copy paste your rev transcription there, and then put a link to the video on your YouTube account below there, okay? Very, very simple and publish. Those two things on LinkedIn are what you want to do. Just post a quick update and then go back and write an article with a little bit more information as well. All right, everybody? The reason we're gonna do both, okay, is for a couple of reasons. You're gonna use your Instagram image as your photo, because it's worked well, it's branding itself, okay? Um, you wanna share that article to the large real estate groups on LinkedIn, okay? You can go and join custom real estate groups. I'm, I'm a part of a couple of groups that one is 700,000 investors. Another one is 198,000 investors, okay? I'll go show there, share the article there. I'll copy paste my article over to it, okay? I want people to see that. Now, a good thing is um, if you have other photos of the asset, it's great to put those below there. Hey, here's the inside. Here's the back of the yard. Here's the street. What other photos you might have from your realtor? They don't have to be fancy, but at least throw some other photos if you've got it. If you don't have it, no biggie. 
but make sure you use that other information, okay? Well, the beautiful thing is this is gonna help asset managers see your past deals. So if you're reaching out to other asset managers, they're gonna go to your LinkedIn profile page because they all do that. And then you click on there and say, oh, they've done these other deals. Oh, okay, they are serious. It builds your rapport. It builds your expertise level with asset managers from banks. So they see, oh, you're just not some joker broker. You're actually doing deals, okay? It's a great, great thing for you, okay? Now the next thing you do, <laughs> is then go over to Meetup and meet up with others. Okay, go to meetup.com. Join meetup groups in your deals area. It's the number six side of your octagon. Okay, so if we need to find something in Inkster, Michigan, we go to Inkster, Michigan real estate groups and post the order. Most of your real estate groups you'll need to join, which is free. All right, and they'll have either a discussion board or even a mailing list, and I recommend that you do both, but you go basically to the discussion board, copy paste from Rev transcription, take your Instagram image, you have a link from your YouTube video, and put it all in a post on the meetup message board. Now, if the message board, I mean, if the meetup group also has a mailing list, what do you do? Grab that email, send an email out to that mailing list with the same information from, if it, like if I join with Scott at WeCloseNotes.com, I'm gonna send it from Scott at WeCloseNotes.com. Simple email. All right, boom, hey, I got a great deal here in the Inkster area. I'm looking for if there's any investors interested in this deal. Here's a picture of the property. Here's a breakdown of the deal flow, and here's some photos, okay? Now, sending, uh, posting, the mess, uh, posting to the message boards, they won't always allow you to upload photos unless it's in the group already. That's why you wanna have the deal video, okay? That's why it's important to upload the link, the YouTube link, and post it in there and share that in there so they can click on it and see it and go from there, okay? Now, the tricky thing is there's a lot of people in California that are investing in other parts of the country. So you may wanna to go to join large groups in San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, or Orange County, California, um, as many as, and post the same thing to those discussion boards or mailing out to those mailing lists to get people that have cash but don't have a deal flow, okay? A lot of them will fund or buy or become funny partners or joint venture partners with you on either that deal or you know what? Future deals. Okay. Questions so far. But you can find meetup groups by just going, typing in, meet, go to meetup.com, bring a profile, it's free. Type in what type of groups you're looking for and the area. And then you want to join groups that have large, most active, and then also the most number of members are the two things you can clarify. And you'll find groups that have 5,000 people in it. Okay. Thinking of thinking about posting the discussion boards or sending out the mailing list, sending out one email to 5,000 email messengers or active real estate investors, very, very powerful, okay? And free to do, no cost yet. So we're at number six. Questions before we move to number seven. All right, moving on. Two birds with one stone. Ah, uh, I love this. All right, next thing you wanna do is take your Instagram image and literally post it to Twitter. Twitter.com may, may not be around in five years, but there's still a tremendous amount of people using it on a regular basis, okay? Thing, about, thing that's tricky about Twitter is you only have 160 characters. So that's why you wanna have a good image or the link to the video in there and use a short description. But you're gonna have to probably shrink down your description to something that makes sense because you're gonna have to use hashtags, uh, effective hashtags to really have people see that. You may wanna use the hashtag of the city, whether it's like Detroit or Inkster, hashtag real estate, hashtag rental, yeah, hashtag fix and flip. You've got a limited amount of information. So what you have to do with Twitter is you may wanna go ahead and create a buffer account, which is I think free, who's usually got a free account, and schedule your, twi your Twitter, your Instagram, or Facebook posts at different times. You could literally go in and set a lot of this stuff up to automate for you, okay? Now, I'd also go ahead and post the information to Pinterest, which is our number eight thing, and use the hashtags as well on a, a real estate board out there. Definitely important, okay? But that's seven and eight. We got your octagon right there, okay? Got your octagon made with those two things. But literally, post in there, easy thing to do, but I would post multiple times throughout the day on Twitter because it's a – first come first surf kind of feed so posting morning afternoon evening couple times using different hashtags the same post can help you get things done now some people oh don't post the same thing i think you honestly need to 
especially in the real estate arena, if you're trying to help use it. Because I've raised capital, I've found investors, I've connected with people on Twitter just because they use the hashtag real estate. And we have about 19,000 followers on there, okay? Uh, the last thing out of these, because you've perfected a lot of your marketing and tweaking it, is doing a mass email to the masses, all right? Uh, making and creating an email in this deal flow sheet, sending it out your customer relationship manager, whether it's MailChimp or Constant Contact. I mean, those are more email service providers. Uh, like I use Infusionsoft as a CRM tool for sure, but this is number nine. So maybe you don't want to post to Pinterest or Twitter. Well, you can sub it in by getting an email out to your database. I think email definitely needs to be always one of the eight things that you do, okay? Once again, you've heard this before, use your Instagram image, your YouTube video link, and your Rev transcription to help you write your email, okay? Send an email out. See, this is what we're talking copy, paste, copy, paste. Now, the important thing this is offer up a referral code, a referral fee, a wholesale fee. Hey, if somebody can help me find a buyer for this one, I'll pay you 500 or 1,000 bucks for a buyer or a funding source. Okay? Very easy to do. A lot of people won't do it. You know, hey, make 500 bucks for helping me sell this asset. Okay? Now, if you're using MailChimp or um, MailChimp, I know a lot of you use MailChimp. If you've got a paid account, that means you have more than 2,000 con connections, or go ahead and sign up for the paid account. It has a really cool feature that allows for you to use something called Time Warp when you're scheduling your email, where you can send it out to the best time that your contacts open their emails. Now, you have to do this at least 24 hours prior to the email going out, but it's a really cool thing. So if you're writing it, say I'm writing this thing tonight. And I want to do my email, or I'm writing it Sunday night, and I want to go out Monday afternoon. Well, it'll pick the best time Monday for me to send my email out to my con connections. And if they're in different time zones, oh, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, it'll send it 10 o'clock in the East Coast, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. So it'll send up four different times. So it's really, really cool that, to do that, and it does help to really increase your, uh, your open rates. Now, another thing that you want to do, you wrote your first email, and you've hit send or schedule. Immediately go back in and hit replicate that email and go ahead and set it up to go out 48 hours later to the people that didn't open the first email, okay? And you can set that all up in your customer list, send it to the people that didn't open the first email. Very easy to do, it saves you from having to log back in and get tied up with having to do it again. You can literally take you literally about 20 seconds to hit replicate an email and set it up at, at two hours later or two days later, okay? Like I said, pre-write it and schedule your second email after writing the first one. Get it done. Get it done now. And I guarantee this is where most people fall down. You'll get it somewhere around an 18 to 20% in your open one, you know, your first email, and you'll get about another 6 to 12% in the second time you send it out if you follow the schedule. Now, the thing is, keep in mind, is you're sending the first email to go out at 11 o'clock in the morning, send the other one to go out later in the day. So if you send it out at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time, send the one out two days later at like 3 o'clock. Standard time. So flip flop. If one's going in the morning, send the second one in the eve in the afternoon. Okay. If you send the other one out in the afternoon and evening, send it out in the morning. Now do not send it out at middle of the night or four o'clock in the morning. Send it out 10, 11 o'clock is often the optimal time, or three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Questions about this before we move on. There are plenty of videos out there with MailChimp too to help you write your email set up. But literally, you don't have to recreate the wheel. You just have to set up some of the things you you know, it's good to have a logo. You want to have your, your face on the email as well, somewhere on the side there. All right. But the more you do this, hey, check out our, our most recent deal available. Check out our deal that's available. All right. It's available for sale. The most difficult thing with MailChimp is going to be setting up your first email. Okay. Because it's going to suck. It's going to take, take, take some time. But honestly, this is the biggest bang for your buck. The reason... We do this as number eight or number nine is you've already created the content through your Instagram, your Facebook Lives, your YouTubes, all your rev videos so that you have all the stuff that you need to write an effective email, okay? You're not gonna be a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, journalist, but it's gonna get the word out of what you're doing, okay? Uh, Laura says, the second email on MailChimp sucked too, but less than the first one. That's right, it sucked less, but embrace the suck. You're getting better at it, okay? How do you get your email list? Well, let's see. If you're on LinkedIn, 
You can export your LinkedIn connections. If you've gone to an event and networked at real estate clubs, you pull your business cards, okay? Pretty easy to do to get an email list, okay? All right. Now, another thing is you want to use your words. <laughs> uh, we use WordPress for our website. Website uh, has been a big question for people. Oh, I need a website. Look, we use WordPress. Other people use Wix. Just you need to have a website in today's business, okay? Um, there's some big things about your website, okay? You want to make sure and have your social media links there where they can click on and go to your social media profiles. Because what happens a lot of time, if somebody sees an article on Facebook, they click on it. When they see your website, they click on it, take it to your website. A lot of you will have op a lot of you need to have opt-ins so people can opt into your website. Or they'll see your social media links and click on it. Hey, I want to stalk you in Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Oh, you've got a YouTube channel. Let me click on the YouTube channel, see what's going on there. It all works together as we talked about the octagon pulling it all in so it's tight. Okay. Um, as we talked about before, use your HTTP. Like I have HTTP. Uh, you know, www.weclosenotes.com is the first words we put in our YouTube videos. Okay. And our Vimeo videos. So they see that they can click on the fact that we use HTTP, you know, semicolon, double backslash, backslash. That makes it a clickable link. If we just put weclosenotes.com, that's not a clickable link, okay? Um, another like an important thing with your website, you want to have opt-ins. And you want to just don't say, get on my email list. Have something that drives traffic. So like when people go to our website, hey, buy deals. You want to buy notes? They click on there, right? Or you learn about our mastermind, click on there. Get trained. They click on, they get in. So they basically determining what they want from us versus just going into a generic opt-in thing, okay? Um, one thing you can do with your website oftentimes, I don't know if Wix does this, but WordPress does, is that we can literally, actually, let me do this here real fast. Uh, Cedric, go get you a deal, bud. Use the image from a deal that you're looking, get a tape in, talk about a deal, okay? You maybe don't use the full don't use the full address, but use a picture. You're, you can do this. We've had this conversation before, everybody. Use a deal out there from a tape. Hey, I got a deal I'm working through. I need some help. Okay. You want to give away the address. All right. Um, you can use your RSS feeds for your YouTube or social media accounts to feed into a lot of your websites. So, uh, or we have a link on there. And Nicole did this with our, our website. Let me do a new share here. As long as you know, if you go to weclosenotes.com, it pops our website, right? Home about training, blog, podcast, con contact there, you know, different events, search. If you go up here, you see it, sign up for buy notes, virtual class, mastermind. Those get things opt in. We get about five, 10 people a day. Our latest blogs. So this is just an RSS feed from our blog where it automatically loads up. Okay. Note Night in America, every Monday at 7 p.m. Nicole put that. So if people click on that, I think it plugged into this very, very easy, okay? All right. Sign up for the virtual. We have a different events that we're going to. Start investing. And then we have our social media things down at the bottom. I would actually prefer these to be further up, but it works with what we got going on here. Same thing. Click on here. Learn more things about what we got going on. RSS means. So basically an RSS feed. I don't know exactly what RSS stands for, but this is where you can uh, get the link. The RSS feed will automatically refresh the latest articles or latest videos, okay? Very, very easy to get to add and import into your website, okay? All right. Questions here. Awesome. Good stuff, Marissa. Glad to hear that you're getting over to it from wholesaling. All right. Let's go back to the website. My link in. All right. All right. Uh, a website is worthless if you don't create content to feed people to it. You could have the greatest website available, but if you're not creating videos or blogs or posting to social media or other things, nobody's going to see your website. Okay. Nobody's going to see your website and click on it to take them to you. A website is great. You got to have these days, but you got to have something that people click on to get there. And that could be your deals, it could be your social media, it could be your videos. One of our biggest referrers is our videos on YouTube and Vimeo, okay? 
It feeds a lot of people on our website because they come across it. They find a video we're talking about or a webinar, click on our website, takes them to there. Oh, I want to learn how to buy notes. Oh, I want to join the mastermind. Oh, I want to buy deals. Okay. Simple, simple things. Now let's talk about some bonus rounds here. Who wants some bonus round? Who wants to go extra rounds with me? Okay. Yes, Jonathan, if you don't have a deal, present it like one you're working on. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get at. Look at the assets you have on these tapes and things like that and break it down. And say, hey, I need, I'm looking for funding. I got this great deal. Here's a property in Michigan. Here's a property in Columbus, Ohio. That's not hard to do. Come on. 21st century, man. Take a picture of the property and make a fake one to build interest. No, not a fake one. Use a real deal so you know what you're talking about. Okay? Use the screenshot from the Google Drive and edit it up and use it. Hey, here's a deal I'm working on. Not that you closed on it, but say, here's a deal that I'm working on. Do all the due diligence on it. Okay? Yeah, all right, good stuff. Thanks, Connor. Connor Steinberg just tagged me in the post, good stuff. All right, bonus rounds. Um, one of the things we ask when people opt into our website or the webinars to be made notice is we ask for the cell phone numbers. Why? Because we all know that the phone of today is, this, is, the, is the, uh, the smartphone of today is the television of years ago. This is where most people get their news message from, right? So we ask for their cell phone number so we can get their right number. So if we want to, we can send them a text update or I can take their list and do a voice drop. Hey, you got a deal in your neck of the woods. Okay, or hey, we got a new deal that we're working through. All right, very, very easy to do, okay? Um, you also wanna make sure if you've got a website that you go and check to see if it's web, if mobile optimized and fast loading. So if you've got a lot of photos on there, you may need to shrink your photos down or optimize your photos. Pretty easy, relatively to do, not hard to do at all but you wanna make sure, because sometimes we had some big photos on there that were taking really high def photos that were taking longer to, for their, our website to load, okay? Um, you can check out text messaging services. Many of you guys have text the word notes into Sending 2000. We use a company called Mobit for that. Um, Infusionsoft also has a different uh, company called Fix Your Funnel. Text the word notes into 484-535-1600, something like that. Text messaging is really a great way. I mean, I guarantee most of you, Oh, let me tell you a little story. Back in 2000, and I graduated from college in August of 2001, and I started working for Verizon Wireless in, I think, March of that year. I was one of the top salesmen. You know, set all sorts of sales records. Well, they started having digital packages attached to your phone. I remember getting mobile web on your phone used to cost $6.95 a month. All right? Text messaging package was like 3 bucks for like 50 text messages. And Jesus knows... I go through 50 texts. Heck, heck, half of them I get 50 text messages from Stephanie Goodman on a daily basis. Just joking, dear. Just joking. Um, but we all use it so much now than we used to beforehand. We're going to be using a lot of text messaging servicing this year to get the message out. Because with Mobit, I could set up and create a nice funnel or picture. Hey, here's a deal in your neck of the woods. Do you want to jump into this? Do you want to buy it? Okay. Because that's really cool things we're going to be doing because – we can take our information from our contact list that we've asked people to tell, hey, what are your top three markets? And as we get deals in those markets, we can send a direct text message to people's phone. Hey, we got a deal in one of your top three markets. Really kind of a cool thing that we're working through right now. Now, one thing to realize, everybody, is six pack abs don't come in six minutes, okay? This is not gonna happen in six minutes. You're not gonna be the best at what you do the first time you do it. This is something you've gotta do over and over and over and over again. And Laura uh, said a second ago, oh, the second email didn't suck as bad, all right? Yes, first time you work out, oh, my abs hurt or my stomach hurts, my arms are so sore. There's times I walk out of the gym like, oh, I can't shave today because I'm, I'm glad I shaved this morning because I can't shave. I need a straw to drink out of my phone. You're going to get better and you're going to get stronger at what you do. But if you guys aren't doing anything right now, mm, you're, you're refusing to do it because you're a lazy ass you really should not have success because success in today's market entrepreneur is all about those that go that extra step. You do a little bit more, 10% more gives you exponential growth. Okay. And what, if you want to do something here in the next week, work to create one deal octagon, do it, create one deal octagon. All right. Create it, get it going here. Challenge yourself to get this stuff done in the next seven days. Cause you all can do this. And I'm talking, all of you can do a Facebook Live video. All of you can upload it to YouTube. All of you can send an email out to your database. All of you can find a deal. 
okay? You, it, it will get easier, you will get faster at it, and you will see results if you keep doing it. You may not see immediate results in the first one, but the second one, the third one. Remember, we've talked about this before. 80% of sales are made after the fifth contact. You just got to do this a multitude of times, but trust me, you will get better. You will see results, okay? Um, a little extra, extra, extra. There's a thing that we've done in the past in fleeting things and we will probably do a little bit more so this year is we'll take that Instagram image and go over to post or Vista print or postcard mania and create a postcard of the deal. All right. And, and just a little tip here, guys. Vista print will often give you 25 to 50 postcards for free the first time you do it. Okay. And one of the things that would work really well is maybe you go on and you pull a list of self-directed IRA investors off the county records. We've showed you guys how to do in the past. Hmm. What would you pull their address for? Because you know, as self-directed IRA investors, you go to the county of Bracel district, you see they own property in the area. Hmm. Hey, we got a deal in your neck of the woods. Now you maybe sold that deal off, but you sent that postcard out to them. You've got, 30, 40, 50 other people in the neck of the woods. I guarantee if you give them your website or an email or phone number to opt into, I guarantee they almost all will because they're all looking for deals. I get deals sending me that way at postcards. And I always take this, the people who call me on my property, I put their email and phone number in my database, okay? Maybe you want to post, send those postcards out to IRA investors, not just in the deal area, uh, not in your area, but your deal area. Maybe send that's the same thing. Maybe you want to send it to people here locally. Now, I don't buy anything here in Austin, but I guess I'll send a postcard. Hey, just closed on this deal. You want to find out how we picked up the $60,000 property for $14,000 and got a 30% ROI on the cash flow? Give me a phone call, okay? Most important thing is you have to realize you're investing not for today or tomorrow, but for the future. Now, by the future, I'm not talking 30 years. I'm not talking a year from now, eh, maybe a little bit in the year from now, because there's a lot of you out there who've watched me for three months, six months, 12 months before you reach out to do anything. And that's fine. Totally fine. Okay. You all can do that same thing. That deal in Inkster, I probably won't raise any money off it for the next week or the next month, but I probably will the next 90 days or the next quarter. Okay. The thing to keep in mind, if I don't ever do anything, I have no success. If I do do something, I get one person to respond to that. One person is exponentially greater than zero. Okay? So the whole idea of this is keep punching. Maybe some of you should print out the marketing octagon image as a target of what you're doing. And you can run it around. It, is, it makes it a really easy thing you can pin on. Okay, we did an email. Boom, let's do we do with the WordPress or did we do something else? Okay? Do we post it to Meetup? All right? Do we do a video? There's a whole variety of things you can do. Now, right now, I have 19, just under 1,900 followers on Instagram, okay? But through keywords, I can find a lot more people versus just the people that follow me, okay? Facebook, I have 34,000 on my business page and another 5,000 on my personal page. But there are groups that I'm a part of with over 100,000 people. Why would I not want to connect to them? Why would I not want to fish in those bigger pools and what's in my own immediate circle, Okay. LinkedIn, I have about uh, 11.5 in followers, but I'm part of groups that one group is over 700,000 investors. Why would I not want to post to those? Okay. YouTube, oh my gosh, 24 hour a day, seven day a week advertising. Second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. Post stuff there, people will find you. Okay. Twitter, uh, I got 18,000 plus hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that follow the same keyword search, just like Instagram. Okay. Meet up groups. I'm a part of media groups that combined have literally over 60,000 investors that I can mail out to or post to their discussion board. Why would I not want to have the one to the many conversations there? Okay. Pinterest, Google, my gosh, just a click to add an ad or add a deal flow. Why would I not want to have that stuff working out there for me? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And honestly, if you've got a really good picture of a property, Pinterest is really good. Okay. Oh, that's so cute syndrome. A lot of people get. Okay. I have grown my email list, everybody, over the last 15 years because I grew it at one business card, one contact, and one webinar at a time. I'm here today because literally in 2005, 2004, 
when I started working for somebody else, I knew that at some point I would not be Scott Carson who works for SMI Funding. I would be, or Aerial Capital, the mortgage company, I would be Scott Carson, the Scott Carson. And many of you can do that. Many of you can be the Adam Yeagers, the Anthony Uvas, the Austin Payne, the Bill Greesmers, all right? The Bob Bullingers, the Boyd McLeans, the Brad Calgills, the Christina Fullers, the Clinton, Clifton Sadlers, the Desi Arnezes, the Donna Martins, the Donna Lucios that people turn to when they need help in real estate. I don't care where you're at today. If you started yesterday, if you started a year ago, if you started a year ago, you're not any further along, shame on you. But many of you can take big leaps by doing simple things that don't cost a lot of money. Most of our marketing doesn't cost us hardly anything at all because we use these tools and we have spent time in messing around with it, okay? So if you added, if you were, your sole focus was to add one investor per day, you could do that. I mean, you could go out to a real club meeting, maybe meet 30 investors in one month, and over a year you didn't have maybe 365 new investors. And hopefully if you did that for 10 years, you have 3,600 people to invest with. If you use social media, it will exponentially, if not 10x your business for you. The thing about this, one post, maybe you meet 300 new investors in one month. Maybe at the end of the year, you got 3,600 new investors from your social media posts, followers, people that look at you in social media, because I guarantee you all can do that. People that follow you and connect with you on LinkedIn, it can be done. At the end of 10 years, you've got a following of 36,000 investors, funders, a much larger tribe because you started marketing in 21st century numbers, not the old way of doing things. And we know all what happens when you keep busting your butt, busting your butt, busting your butt. You take it one step at a time, one step at a time, and what eventually happens, you're standing on top. Your arm raised, doing some big things because you can't overcame problems and you're now wearing that championship belt around your waist because you work smart. You were coachable. You did what the other guy wasn't willing to do to be the best at what you could possibly be. And unfortunately, many people out there are only doing a fraction of what they could be doing. And that's why they're seeing a fraction of the amount of success, the amount of deals, the amount of capital raises, and ultimately a fraction of the money they should be making. Okay? Any questions? Yo, Adrian is right, Jeffrey Wolf. Yo, Adrian, I love you. Any questions about the stuff we covered tonight, everybody? And honestly, if you don't believe in what I'm talking about, then you probably should go do something else. I am not the person for you then. Because trust me, this is the most important facet of what we do on a daily basis, is the marketing side. Totally is. And yes, can you hire VAs to help you out with this stuff? Yes, but you still got to show them the way and show them what to do. Michelle says, I'm just digesting. Yeah, I know. I gave you a full contact list of freaking a buffet of punches to the face. All right? A buffet in the octagon. All right? <laughs> oh, good stuff, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, John says, okay, so work deals to get leads for investors. Once I got investors interested, then I submit bids. Yes, sure. Sounds good. Thanks. You're welcome, Michelle. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. That's all I've got for tonight. Um, let's see what else we got here. Questions. Hopefully it was helpful. Yes, it's recorded. Once again, guys, if you're listening to this or watching this on Facebook Live, please share this. If you're watching this, you're connecting with me on Facebook, go back onto Facebook and share this. I would really appreciate it. Um, I'm doing something. I want to test something out, and I need your help in sharing to see what we can do for something down the road. I can't help you share it, but I sure hope you would. All right? All right? If you're listening on, on iTunes or uh, Stitcher or any of those, thank you for listening. Like I said, once again, drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com, and we'll be glad on helping you get <clears throat> got a, a special prize for you for listening. Focus on completing one bridge at a time, best order of media. I just gave it to you, Blitzen. All right. Thank you, Terso. Thanks, Bill. 
Kenneth Younger, great information. Would you have a coach to introduce me to? Uh, depends on what kind of coach you're looking for, Kenneth. Drop me an email at scottyweeklosenoffs.com. Michelle says, till next time, that's right. Blitz in, Pinterest, and LinkedIn, and Twitter. I just gave it to you in the order I should suggest you should do it in. That's why we did it that way. Okay? They don't take that, they don't take that long to set up. You can set them all up in literally a day. All right? Easy enough to set up. Thanks, Desi. Good to see you, buddy. Good job, Clifton. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Go make something happen this week. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you all at the top. Otherwise, mama said knock you out. Boom.